Your Excellency President Vladimir Putin, President of the Russian Federation, Excellencies, fellow BRICS leaders, Honorable Ministers, and ladies and gentlemen. Let me thank our Chair, President Putin, for hosting us in Kazan for the 16th BRICS Summit. Fifteen years ago, South Africa attended its first BRICS summit in Sanya in China. Today, we gather as a group of nine leading emerging countries. Our historic expansion is a beacon of hope for the Global South, and South Africa. We are delighted to welcome in our ranks the additional members who obviously will strengthen BRICS. Individually, we are countries of diverse histories, values, and strengths. Together, we demonstrate our own strengths and histories and the benefits of cooperation instead of competition. As an increasingly influential group, we must ensure the success of this expanded BRICS family. We should be positively disposed also to those who would like to be part of BRICS. 25 years ago, South Africa's first democratic president, President Nelson Mandela, undertook one of his final visits to the Russian Federation. During this visit, President Mandela paid homage to the people of Russia. He said they were in the vanguard of that great legion of humanity who shared our struggle against apartheid and therefore also our victory. He said this was the solidarity of true internationalism transcending a vast geographical distance, as well as the cultural and social differences between our peoples. As the world bears witness to the continued plight of the Palestinian people, South Africa is compelled to emulate that spirit of solidarity that Nelson Mandela spoke of. As a country, we understand the value of global support for a people's right to self-determination and statehood. We are gravely concerned at the further escalation of conflicts that are raging in the Middle East, conflicts that have already caused so much death and destruction. The International Court of Justice has made it clear that the international community has a duty to prevent the genocide by Israel that is unfolding in Gaza. The countries of the world have a responsibility to work for peace and security. As the United Nations General Assembly has now resolved, the countries of the world have a responsibility to promote the realization of the right of the Palestinian people to self-determination. Lasting peace and security will not be achieved until Palestinians have realized their aspirations for statehood, justice, and freedom. Peace and security across the world requires the collective will of the community of nations. It requires that the UN Security Council should be a representative and inclusive body. We see from many conflicts raging across the world that the UN Security Council has not been able to fulfill its mandate to maintain international peace and security. 
We believe that this is so because it does not represent the interests of the global community and therefore does not have the means to give effect to the global desire for peace. Just as BRICS has a vital <clears throat> role in shaping a new multipolar world order, so too must it use its voice to advance change. We found consensus on the reform of the UN Security Council when we met in Johannesburg last year. Let us build on that foundation to develop an improved consensus that addresses the concerns and aspirations of BRICS members. We welcome the report of our national security advisors. As BRICS countries, our security cooperation should continue to enhance mutual trust and build practical cooperation in economic growth matters, particularly when it comes to trade and investment and focusing on key areas. It should enable us to address complex security challenges, including terrorism, new technologies such as artificial intelligence, cyber crimes, and instability in various regions. We meet at a time when multilateralism is under threat. We see this 16th BRICS summit as an opportunity to harness our collective strength to build a safer, more prosperous, and equitable world. It is in this spirit that South Africa will assume the presidency of the G20 next year under the theme of solidarity, equality, and sustainable development. We will seek to mobilize the countries of the world to take practical steps to resolve global challenges while strengthening international cooperation within a rules-based system. In an interconnected world, the challenges faced by one nation affect all nations in the world. Through solidarity, we seek to advance a unified effort and mutual support amongst nations. By advancing equality, we seek to ensure fair treatment, opportunities, and advancement for all individuals in all nations. Sustainable development is, among, is about meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their own needs. Over the years, BRICS has emerged as an important voice of the Global South. The expansion of BRICS is evidence of the growing value of our cooperation. By working together, we believe that we can pave the way for a brighter future for all our peoples and for the global community of nations. I thank you. Thank you so much, Excellency, Mr. President. Thank you for mentioning the assistance provided by the Soviet Union, by Russia, in Africa's fight for its independence. 